Okay, uh, so uh, it's a pleasure to present all of you to uh, Stephanie Ponsard. For those who do not know her, uh, she is uh, a PhD student at our institute. Uh, um, I'm the supervisor. Um, and uh, she's working in general on the foundations of mathematics, the questions of question of what the foundation is or supposed to be, and whether set theory is a better foundation or a category theory or none of those or both, or um, and for what purpose uh, we would want a, a foundation. So all these very interesting questions uh, in philosophy of mathematics, but I think go way beyond. Uh, 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 mathematics, because uh, we might uh, want a foundation or not want it uh, elsewhere too in the, the development of science and knowledge. Um, so I think these questions go broader and um, it's interesting that she's now uh, looking at the literature on grounding, uh, at fundamentality, uh, to see whether uh, some insights in metaphysical uh, grounding or fundamentality can be gained also for the foundations of mathematics, uh, which is a non-trivial uh, task and, and, and question. Um, so it's a pleasure to uh, introduce you and uh, you have the floor for one hour and then Thank we'll have questions. Thank you, Peter. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, as uh, Peter introduced it, this talk is about uh, the foundations of mathematics. Um, and we will uh, see whether they can be expressed in terms of fundamentality or of grounding or uh, in terms of the two of them. And we will extend that to the two main potential uh, theories for the foundations of mathematics. Uh, a set theory is not a potential theory, it's accepted, but there is always the debate around category theory. So I will try to apply that to the two of them. So the overview uh, is the following. I will first introduce uh, what I call a purpose-oriented description of metaphysical fundamentality and of metaphysical grounding. Uh, it's purpose-oriented because these two topics are very wide. Um, there are different uh, varieties, uh, subtleties in different definitions different uh, for the different authors. So I will pick or build uh, my own definition, conception, or understanding of each of them. Um, as Pat Peters mentioned, it, that's not the main topic of my PhD. So that's uh, rather a, a side question. So I haven't been looking at the primary literature, but at the secondary literature from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy um, with the two uh, main topics. So I will describe uh, my own conception of metaphysical fundamentality and of metaphysical grounding. Then I will give my personal view on foundations of mathematics and then discuss foundations of mathematics as fundamentality and or grounding. Uh, also set theory, because that's the, the main accepted theory for foundations of mathematics. And then of course discuss category theory, which is a kind of a challenger of a set theory for the foundations of mathematics. So also in terms of fundamentality and grounding, and then propose some conclusions. So uh, fundamental, uh, metaphysical fundamentality. Why do we talk about uh, metaphysical fundamentality? It comes from the idea that there is something which is basic or primitive in the world so that means that it's something that is uh, ontologically independent or which is ungrounded. Um, the conception can, uh, is related to our conception of uh, can be related to, uh, probably to our conception of science, uh, which is uh, related to the special role of particle physics as the fundamental level of reality. We have the quarks as the uh, basic uh, building blocks. Um, there are, uh, roughly speaking, two main types of metaphysical fundamentality. The first one that I would 
uh, that is called absolute, in the sense that uh, there is an ontological independence or an ongroundedness, uh, full stop. So some facts are fundamental, and that's it. And the other type is a relative uh, fundamentality, which means that there is a, a, a hierarchical structure uh, in the reality. So, for example, uh, we would have a particle physics at the fundamental level on which chemist, uh, elementary chemistry is built and then biochemistry. So that's the, the underlying idea that there are uh, some facts that are more fundamental than others. So and as a result of that conception, uh, there is a kind of priority in the ordering. So there would be a fundamental level which needs to be well founded and which gives rise to a view that reality is also well founded. Uh, fundamentality has two main roles. Um, the, the first one is uh, to, to say that there is a foundation of being which consists uh, of independent entities and that these entities constitute a complete basis on which everything else depends or from which everything else can be derived. Um, there are um, different ways to account for that fundamentality, either uh, from fundamental entities or from fundamental properties. Um, in order to express these ideas, um, there is the conception of a complete minimal basis. That's the conception that is used to explicate fundamentality as the fundamental entities acting as the basic building blocks of reality. So these fundamental entities would determine everything else, and determine is taken to mean ground, realize, or build. So you see that already if we try to, to describe more precisely metaphysical fundamentality, we already introduced some grounding terms. Um, so from that conception with the complete minimal basis, the idea is that by giving a complete list of fundamental entities, we have a minimal complete description of reality. So fundamentality as a complete minimal basis must include all the fundamental entities, but only these fundamental entities. Of course, uh, with such a conception, uh, the, there is the question of the uniqueness of that complete minimal basis, which from what I've been reading in the literature, in the literature seems to remain an open question. Um, another slightly different but also interesting conception of metaphysical fundamentality is primitivism. So the main idea behind primitivism, uh, roughly speaking, is to say that we cannot define fundamentality, but we can characterize it. So in this sense, the reality should be understood as objectivity. Um, primitivism is closely related uh, to the complete uh, minimal basis conception, um, but we can express a slight difference in the sense that the complete minimal basis means what is real in itself, rather than with primitivism, um, that's more a characterization of what may be true. So we can express um, in the complete minimal basis the primitivism. In this case, we would understand the entities in the fundamental basis as basis in the sense that they play a role which is analogous to axioms in a theory. So that would characterize uh, fundamentality and rather than define it. Another important concept in metaphysical fundamentality 
is the concept of well-foundedness. So that's the one key task of fundamentality is to capture the idea that there is a foundation of being and that everything else depends on these fundamental entities uh, and that would need to be expressed in terms of well-foundedness. So the origin of the term well-foundedness um, is from set theory, where an order on a given domain is said to be well-founded if every non-empty subset on that domain has a minimal element for that uh, order relation. So it means that uh, we do not end up in, with an infinite uh, number of descending chains. There is a fundamental level uh, from which things can be made, but we cannot um, end up with something circular. Uh, so the consequence of uh, the definition in terms of well-foundedness is that um, the fundamentality is given relative to a given order. So that's uh, a given dependence relation that must be made explicit. And um, much of the literature on well-foundedness focuses on grounding. So from all these uh, characteristics uh, and the, the description I've given, we could characterize metaphysical foundationalism as the view that reality has a foundation, um, but in the sense that that fundamental level must be specified. And so a metaphysical foundation uh, uh, means that every non-fundamental fact uh, is fully grounded by some fundamental facts on which everything else depends. So, that's for the, not the, the, the grounding with respect to fundamental facts, but in terms of entity, the non-fundamental entity are dependent on some fundamental entities or properties uh, that give uh, the full account of the being of the non-fundamental entities. And the most common way to specify this idea of having a foundation is in terms of uh, well-foundedness. I have one question, if you don't mind. Uh, so you say uh, that um, that it, in the first uh, paragraph that it needs to be specified. That there is a fundamental level in the sense that it needs to be specified. But confused by that, I mean, we are the ones who specify stuff, while. Um, what is metaphysically fundamental doesn't seem to be dependent on us. Uh, so, what does this needs mean? Is that a, like a, it seems like an obligation for us to do it? But that cannot be in the definition of what a foundation is uh, of of reality. It's reality that has a foundation, not us. Who? So, does that mean that there's a uniqueness of foundation or, or uniqueness of fundamental level um, in this? that it is specified or does it mean that um, that it's specifiable that the principle we should be able to specify if we had perfect knowledge of the so so what do you mean by it needs to be specified so um if if we we have that conception of a metaphysical foundation either in science or in mathematics um we need to specify the if you want to build something on this foundation, this foundation must be clearly specified um, because other, otherwise um, you could say that there is a fundamental level somewhere that you don't know what it is, but then you don't specify the entities on which you build the construction. So, um, and there are, we can argue um, two different things. Um, for the purpose of founding a domain, we need to specify it, but it can be uh, reviewed as, I would say, the, the knowledge evolves. For example, I think that uh, 
two centuries ago, so if we had been talking about the fundamental level in physics, we would have been talking about the electrons, protons, and the atoms. Why now people uh, speak of quarks? So uh, it's up to us to specify it, but it's not something that will not evolve anymore in time. <coughs> and I would not say that it's <coughs> unique because um, from the, from the literature and the theoretical point of view, uh, in metaphysical fundamentality, um, it's still under discussion. Um, but also, I will argue that uh, both set theory and category theory can be uh, considered at fundamental level. So I would say it's not necessary that the basis is unique. So now for the grounding. Uh, grounding can be defined as a realist uh, metaphysics. So the, the grounding studies what grounds what. So which are the facts that ground the that ground other facts. Um, there are two mainly two types of grounding. Uh, one which is explanation-based and the other one which is determination-based. Uh, the explanation-based grounding, uh, for example, um, if we want to explain, uh, if we talk about uh, the brittleness of a bowl, we will say that it's grounded in the ionic bonds of the constituents, so that the bowl is brittle because the bonds are ionic, so that's the, the bonding that accounts for the brittleness. Uh, while for determination-based grounding, uh, we would say that the ball's brittleness is grounded on the uh, ionic bonds of the constituent atoms uh, which made the ball. So that's more the, 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 the determined by the properties of the constituents of the ball. And uh, that uh, we account for the brittleness of the ball. Um, grounding can be full or partial. So, uh, for the partial grounding, uh, we will say that the Q fact is grounded by uh, other facts if these facts contribute either to explain or determine the fact that we want to ground. Um, so they partially contribute, while in the case of full grounding, these two facts are, uh, um, are the only one uh, to ground uh, the, the fact that must be grounded, so nothing else needs to be added to have a fully adequate explanation or determination of the fact. And the center, two uh, central features of grounding are the strict order ordering. So grounding is a strict order. So it means that it's transitive, irreflexive, and anti-symmetric. And uh, the, this uh, notion of well-foundedness is um, taken in the sense that um, we, uh, we do not have don't worry, non-terminating chains of grounds. So there is really a, a fundamental uh, grounding level. Um, so, um, as I have mentioned, there are uh, lots of links between the two, between these two concepts. Um, so, but uh, these two, these links between fundamentality and grounding can be understood as the fact that these uh, two um, conceptions want to express a non-causal relation between two things. Uh, for example, when we say that a given act is evil because it causes harm, the because is there not to express a causal link between the two facts, but uh, it tells us uh, what grounds the heaviness of the act. That's the fact that it causes harm. So that's, uh, I would say, the main link between the two of them, because that's the main aim. 
so from the interpretation I am giving here, and the interpretation I will base the rest on the talk on, is I would take as something explanatory, fundamental, as grounding. So what are the facts that are funda uh, at the fundamental level uh, for the explanation as grounding? Why um, fundamentality is more considered as something compositional. So what are the entities or the properties at the fundamental level? Um, so, as I said, the, the focus is on foundations of mathematics, so uh, discussing foundations of mathematics in terms of, of uh, fundamentality and of bonding. Uh, the foundations of the need for foundations uh, of mathematics uh, took place in a given historical context, uh, mainly to avoid uh, paradoxes in the formulation of said theory. Um, so, to avoid these paradoxes, the, uh, an axiomatic formulation was adopted. And also, at the same time, uh, there was a, a debate on the status of the, the consistency of the proof. Um, so, these are, for me, two, really the two main uh, features uh, from inside mathematics to the foundations of mathematics. So usually, mathematics, enfin, the foundations of mathematics, are expressed uh, with as six features: uh, ontological, logical, semantical, epistemological, methodological, and metaphysical. So for the ontology, uh, a founding system of a given theory consists of the entities the theory is talking about. Then at the logical or formal level, um, we require from the funding system that it provides a deduction theory and the basis uh, concepts that are involved in the theory. And uh, from the formal point of view, that was the axiomatization of said theory, in which the set, set entity is central to the theory and is defined or rather characterized by the axioms of the theory. Then we have also semantical uh, requirements for uh, foundations of mathematics. Uh, the semantics is, gives the link between the ontology and the formal system. And um, I think that uh, the construction of proof using mathematical logic, logic is not purely formal. Um, so for me, the, propos the mathematical uh, proposition to which the formal system applies have a, def a definite meaning. And the proofs are meaningful arguments. They are not a pure assembly of science. So in some sense, it means that uh, mathematics is not purely a formal game. Um, the metaphysical aspect of foundations of mathematics, that's really the uh, unifying power of the founding system. Um, another important characteristic of foundations of mathematics are the epistemology. So that's to characterize the type of knowledge. Is it uh, an analytical knowledge? Is it based on self uh, Evidence is it purely deductive? And the epistemology uh, includes the justification of a theory, the justification of the axioms that we choose for the theory. Um, it can also be the reduction of the theory to the, to the founding system. Um, and then we have the, the, la uh, the last aspect, which is the methodology which is uh, requiring a clear formulation of the principles, the methods, and the concepts that are used to analyze, but also to construct the objects of the theory. So um, we will now uh, discuss the relation to be a foundation of mathematics, both in terms of the fundamental entities and properties, but also in terms of 
what is grounding what? Um, so the foundations of mathematics uh, as uh, metaphysically fundamental, um, the, the fundamental aspect uh, in the foundations of mathematics is really um, the axiomatization of the theory to avoid paradoxes at the fundamental level. So of course, if you have uh, paradoxes at the fundamental level, then you cannot do anything with the theory. And in principle, uh, all the mathematical knowledge that is derived should be expressed in terms of the fundamental axioms. Um, I said it's in principle because in practice, uh, the theorems and the proofs of theorems in geometry or in uh, whatever field are not uh, expressed in terms of uh, the axioms of set theory. Um, so that's the axiomatization as more a role of characterization than a role of the definition of the entities and their properties. So um, this um, fits with uh, the definition that we have given of the, uh, of the uh, minimal basis in terms of uh, primitivism. So we can consider the axioms as a basis, as I said, in principle, because in practice, that's not really what is done. Um, is it a minimal basis? So um, it, uh, there, are, uh, there are really the minimum, so there is nothing uh, um, of, uh, of which we could get rid of and still keep the, the same uh, theory. Um, that's not clear whether it's a unique basis, but we, we know that it's not a complete basis because it's intrinsic to uh, set theory and to mathematical uh, knowledge. Um, uh, so the foundations of mathematics as grounding, um, the idea is that every non-fundamental uh, mathematical proposition can be grounded on more fundamental uh, proposition with a descending chain. And um, a very central feature of grounding is, of course, the well foundedness of, uh, of the, the foundations that we would give, which is, of course, uh, what we need uh, for mathematics. Um, so now the discussion of set theory as uh, metaphysically fundamental or as metaphysical grounding. Uh, for set theory, so I will give each time an interpretation of set theory as metaphysical fundamentality and as metaphysical grounding. So for the interpretation in metaphysical uh, fundamentality, I would say that the axioms of set theory um, are uh, really the, at the fundamental level. So, as I said, in principle, from which all uh, mathematics can be formulated. And so, as I said, that the interpretation I have of metaphysical fundamentality is a kind of compositional uh, fundamentality. These are that the notion of sets and membership are uh, fundamental. So, set as fundamental entities and membership as fundamental property. And the axioms of set theory uh, as a basis of, um, of, the, of at the fundamental level, so as I said, in principle, as a minimal basis. But we don't know if it's a unique basis. And we know that it's not possible to show that it's complete. Um, as grounding, so um, as uh, already mentioned, the, the, the notion uh, of well-foundedness is uh, crucial to grounding and to fundamentality. And the set theoretic fundament, uh, formulation of well-foundedness is corresponds to uh, the notion that is used for well-foundedness of grounding. So uh, applied to chains of groundings, the well-foundedness of uh, set theory 
uh, would rule out um, infinite and non-terminating quantum chains. And so set theory uh, as a metaphysical grounding can be interpreted in terms that every non-fundamental mathematical proposition is grounded uh, on uh, more fundamental proposition that are given by set theory and mainly by the axiomatization of set FC. So we have another uh, cat theory which uh, on which there is really a debate whether it's a, uh, a founding theory of mathematics that's category theory so i will also uh, propose um, an interpretation of category as metaphysically fundamental and also as a metaphysical grounding so the a category in mathematics is defined um, as something with objects and arrows. The objects of the category uh, have uh, the status of a place order, uh, while uh, the arrows are really the basic building blocks for the definition of a category. Uh, these are the, the arrows that allow to develop uh, the mathematical constructions, but they express the properties of uh, the mathematical objects and the mathematical entities. And in particular, in the axiomatic uh, definition of a category, um, the, that's the characterization of the properties of the collection of objects of the, the category that's not by reference to the members so by the objects but by the relationship between them so that's the composition relationship that must satisfy, satisfy the axiomatic definition of the category and the links so inside the, the connections um, so inside category the link between the objects are given by the arrows so that's the equivalent of the functions in set theory. Um, uh, and uh, the axiom of the category for, for being a category derives from the properties of these functions or the arrows in their composition. And these are also the arrows, um, what we call the functors that allow to define the relation between uh, between collections, so between categories. Um, so category theory in terms of uh, metaphysical grounding now. So um, one very strong um, point of category. Um, it was. Uh, historically developed not as a foundation, as a theory of uh, foundations of mathematics, but as a theory to allow to uh, express uh, algebra and geometry. So it was already uh, developed as uh, an abstract uh, background to, uh, of framework uh, to, to unify two theories. And category uh, theory uh, succeeded also in identifying and explicating extremely fundamental and powerful mathematical ideas, uh, such as what is called the universal property in mathematics. Um, category theory also offers a new uh, theoretical framework in which mathematics can be uh, expressed um, and um, there is a very uh, strong uh, feature of a category that it's unifying power in the sense that a category uh, can in some sense be considered as a basis as a basic as a basis allowing to express the intrinsic an intrinsic uh, structure in mathematics um, so the, the conclusions, um, I, I, I have tried to show that uh, foundations of mathematics can both be expressed as metaphysically 
fundamental in the sense of compositionally fundamental uh, by the fact that um, we have the axiomatization, which allows to avoid para paradoxes at the fundamental level. That's a requirement uh, from my point of view of uh, foundations of mathematics and also the characterization of the fundamental entities and their properties. These are the uh, ontological and logical or formal requirements to be a foundation of mathematics. And uh, it can also be interpreted as grounding in the sense that every mathematical proposition or every mathematical effect should be is grounded in more fundamental proposition with uh, wealth of wealth on descending chain. Um, so for uh, set theory fits in this requirement for metaphysical fundamentality and for metaphysical grounding. For metaphysical fundamentality, um, we do, so the interpretation of axioms of set theory uh, at the fundamental uh, level uh, are uh, characterized by the clearly defined entities, which are sets, and a property, which is the membership relation to belong to the set. Uh, in terms of grounding, it's that every non-fundamental uh, mathematical proposition is grounded on more fundamental uh, proposition with uh, the descending uh, order to set theory and classically to ZFC. And for uh, category uh, theory, um, I would say that it's metaphysically fundamental uh, from the interpretation of the arrows uh, as uh, basic uh, building blocks and from the axiomatic characterization of a collection uh, by the relation between its member, but also uh, uh, by the relationship between uh, different uh, categories. And in terms of grounding, I would interpret category theory as allowing to uh, ex explicating so grounding very powerful mathematical ideas and also providing a theoretical framework for expressing mathematics. So uh, that's the end of this talk. Uh, I thank you for your attention. Are we doing the break or not? Uh, well, we have the time, that's for sure. So maybe we should do uh, so a short break. Yeah.
et le mieux. Je Voilà. Il y a parlé une perse. Ah oui. Il y a la femme qui a dit mal. Disait de ne pas revenir, je pense. Non, je pense que c'était Oui, elle a dit merci. Voilà, donc on attend pas So, uh, let's open the room seminar for questions. For now, none, on, none online. Okay. Il y a des gens Non. On a pas fait beaucoup de publicité. There's questions around. Uh, yes, thank you for your talk. I my question was so so the the presentation you just gave was trying to apply this notions of metaphysical fundamentality and grounding to to mathematics. And I actually wanted to reverse the question because it got me wondering like to what extent um, to what extent is mathematics being used in these <coughs> metaphysical discussions of fundamentality and grounding. So to what extent has mathematics been used as maybe an example? Because in many sciences that have looked at mathematics as some kind of ideal. So you already mentioned that with the idea of the fact that there's a fundamental level um, has its origin in, in its set theory. Um, so so that's one question. And the other question is also is it is it that they're trying to mimic what is already present in mathematics, or is it that they're just using these mathematical theories? For example, I know that there are some some recent papers now with fundamentality discussing the, the, the relative fundamentality of different levels in science, and they're applying the integrity theory to that to somehow formalize all of these ideas. So it seems that the mathematics is a really good playing field as a, a lot of, a lot of you know, as all the materials you may want as an emphasis to make sense of the mentality and grounding in, in science, let's say. So, so yeah, I want to the first question and see if you have say about that. And if that could explain maybe the, 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 the links you've been seeing here as well. Um, yep, there are. Um, for the first question, I'm, still, I'm, I'm not an expert on the metaphysical. Uh, from the uh, uh, fundamentality norm uh, grounding, but um, so I, I I don't know uh, to, to which point mathematics bring uh, have influenced them, but it's from that point of view it seems that it's clear that it had an influence having a fundamental level having ax having axioms to be to have a, a proper fundamental level, being sure that um, um, there are no contradictions and these things. So I think that it, it must have uh, I've had an influence. Um, and also for the uh, mathematics and science and the intertwining between um, um, the two of them, that's um, also, I think that I have to think that these they also evolve a little bit together um, because the axiomatization uh, historically in the foundations of mathematics when foundations uh, for mathematics were needed and that uh, Hilbert come, came with this uh, 20 list of problems to, to, to provide good foundations for the future of mathematics his idea was also to found uh, properly, uh, what was at that time uh, the most advanced uh, theory in physics, which was the uh, kinetic theory of gases. So he also uh, pushed toward an axiomatization of uh, other disciplines. And there was also, of course, um, as mo uh, let's say uh, in physics, biology, there is the quantitative aspect, which, which is also based on mathematics. So if um, there are issues at the fundamental level of mathematics, uh, it means that um, I think that's the whole scientific uh, building that would collapse. So I think that's 
um, that's true that there are links um, between these, uh, the need for foundations of mathematics and the link with science. Also, the fact that uh, in mathematics, we, we have, uh, as I interpreted, the metaphysical uh, fundamentality uh, with uh, the, the entities and their properties and the grounding with facts. So, for example, what are the, the, the facts, so the, the axioms of ZFC which ground the rest of mathematics? or um, the, 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 uh, either the set entity or the membership uh, relation. If you look at science, you also have that uh, kind of uh, mirror with uh, uh, particle uh, physics, uh, so, so the, 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 the basic elements of the theory, but also facts, so the um, Element, uh, uh, fundamental physics, which grounds uh, elementary chemistry, which grounds. Uh, so I see a lot of my ropes, uh, but I'm also not a specialist of the field. I think that uh, Peter perhaps knows more uh, on the interaction of really the, what mathematics brought to grounding. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, as an example, uh, for the first case, well, there is clearly an example, as even the like first example that, that Kit Klein always gives for grounding um, is that the fact that Socrates exists uh, grounds the fact that singleton Socrates exists. So singletons are set theory, even though maybe Socrates is not objective set theory, a singleton is a set. Uh, so we could generalize that and say that um, uh, the fact that something exists uh, grounds the fact that its singleton exists, which it would be a such theoretical principle. Um, so even like the most basic example is kind of, kind of from set theory. So there it has been used as an, as an example. But this is not a very mathematical way to look at, at set theory, of course. So there is something like, and this could be another discussion later, uh, um, there is some kind of different way to look at mathematics than the way mathematicians, formal mathematicians, like to look at it. Because there doesn't seem to be these levels. So why would the, the existence of objects be more primitive than the existence of their singleton? I mean, they are by the axioms generated at the same time, so to say. So it's a very metaphysical way to look at math 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 mathematics that is a little bit in apparent conflict with mathematics as a formal enterprise. Um, so it's not very clear whether that's an example for mathematics as such. Um, and then the other point about uh, <coughs> um, about these tools, like you mentioned, uh, a category theory being used for this fundamentality discussions. Um, one could use also notions of neurology, um, of, of set theory, obviously, like, like well-foundedness. Um, and, and, but I don't know whether this goes beyond just the fact that these are the formal tools we have. And like mathematics is a good field to um, study them. Um, but then that's just our way of doing like precise metaphysics by using these tools for mathematics that we have and not by agreeing math everything. Uh, but, but that might be like, a, a, like rather a risky business to, 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 to influence, to make that influence discussions on the foundation of mathematics itself. You know, because it's just a tool, uh, and we could have used any tool, uh, and, and, and so um, it's not clear whether the well-foundedness that, 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 that set theorists uh, typically use is also the best for well-grounded, for groundedness. I've argued that it isn't. Um, well, so, so, so that's a bit of an answer. But uh, I don't know whether you have a... Follow up or something? Or no, 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 it's not screened. It was 
question to you. What extent are any intuitions that some of these metaphysicians actually influenced by looking at metaphysics? Or by, or not, not just by looking at metaphysics and then the foundation of metaphysics, but maybe just by, by using metaphysics and the fact that they're working within the category theory framework and they already influence some of the yeah, first. Yeah, it's interesting. Thank you for the talk. I have two related questions. One, you argue that both category theory and uh, set theory can be both good uh, fundamental physics, uh, fundamental basis and grounding basis for uh, mathematics, right? But one other question I have is uh, if you look at the way the category theory is taken to be related to set theory, you have a lot of people say that the category theory is a way to extend the project of set theory. When you look at the most was a way to set theory with a different kind of logic. And the intuition technology, for example. And so there is a way to see category as a, as a more general version of such theory. So would you say that they are both uh, as good as a as a say, basis, or one is better than the other because it's more general? And this may lead to the, my second question, which is back, can I back to what uh, Peter was saying earlier. Uh, if you're taking both to be uh, as good basis, do you see this as a conventional choice which one you take? And then are you arguing against a kind of Platonism or realism but mathematics? Because at some point you talk about grounding as a, a realism, metaphysical realism or something like that. So I guess that if you take both to be, a, to be as good as basic, and there's a counter choice which one you take to be a more basic, so you go for both. Then I guess you cannot be a Platonist, right? Or you cannot say that metaphysically speaking, there is a true basics as you look right? Uh, at least, yeah, I'd love to say because I'm missing the secret, you know. So, yes, I would argue that both set theory and category are, uh, the two of them are good candidates uh, as theories of foundations of mathematics. Um, if you just accept uh, a category as category theory um, as a generalization of set theory, I think then you would say that category uh, can uh, be just expressed in terms of set theory, so that in the end, set theory is your fundamental level on which you build something uh, more general. So I would not... Um, argue in that direction. I would say that um, so there are um, different re requirements uh, for the foundations of mathematics. I think that there is one really one part uh, which is really the ontology, the formal aspect, um, which is the something which is internal inside mathematics. While around, we have all uh, we have other expectations. So the unifying the core, um, um, the epistemology, the methodology, and when you start to discuss these aspects, then uh, I think that set theory and category theory have different things to bring in, and so. Um, the de debate we go on what what are the, the re requirements more from a, a meta theoretic point of view then you will pick one theory or the other depending on um, what what you what you what you put in your uh, foundational program and so th that's that's rather the the, the point for me that the debate is uh, relate uh, there is a debate. Um, but the people that there is not everything is not always very explicit in what is really expected uh, outside of the theory from the foundation and i think that the, the main reason why the debate is there is for that reason so that um, so you mean it's a question of uh, virtual virtues you have two different systems with two different kind of spiritual virtues and you have to balance which one you prefer yeah, yeah, that's. I would say that it's more uh, historical or programmatic on what, what you expect from the foundations. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, uh, I remember when I asked Lindsay about 
preuve de confirmation. <laughs> you should explore grounding. It's because I became more and more convinced by your study of fundamentality in mathematics. So it really depends on a certain criterion. So it's not in the same sense that set theory is a foundation and category theory. And it's clearly not in the same sense that we use fundamentality in metaphysics or in physics. So, so I said maybe grounding is the way to go because it would be the, the thing that will be you could clarify. And my impression in your talk today, but I didn't follow everything, is that probably it's much better to discuss about grounding in mathematics. Because you would you could say what is true or dependent in virtue of, and you and you you have the tool between this explanation notion, uh, the two the two kind of grounding and determination to have a what a precise criteria to say okay it's a grounding in that sense, a grounding in that sense, and it's less metaphysically charged because you can't talk about grounding without talking about metaphysics. You just say it's it's determined in virtue of it could be so so. Now that you explore grounding a little bit in mathematics, would you say, this is what I would like to say, but I'm not sure if you agree with me, that grounding is the right concept to study this fundamental notion of mathematics. It's the right philosophical concept to analyze this historical program that you well explained in your in the beginning of your dissertation, this, this program that, oh, set theory, oh, category theory, or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, your, your, I think that your question is a little bit different from the one I, mm -hmm. I dealt with here. So the one here is that to ex to show that foundations can be both interpreted into the two of them. I also uh, uh, agree when you say that the grounding would be um, it's more flexible, yeah, mm -hmm. because that's true that uh, uh, for describing the metaphysical fundamentality, we directly use uh, the terms of grounds, we use well-foundedness, we all, all these terms that relate to grounding, so that's a little bit as if we would need grounding for the metaphysical fundamentality. Uh, and so your question is more, is grounding more the, the tool to, um, uh, for exploring the questions of foundations? Um, in, in some sense, uh, I have been thinking in these terms, but now that you ask the question, it could be because, um, as uh, I answered with the, the question about the two programs, so as I said, there are, Usually, the foundations are uh, expressed with the six uh, feature components. And what my, my idea is that there are the, the ontology, the formal and logical aspects, which, which are really intrinsic to mathematics. And the methodology, the metaphysics, the, um, the epistemology, the semantics, these things are more uh, outside and in the program. And when I discussed uh, about my talk with uh, Peter, at some stage he said, yeah, but some, some, uh, when you discuss foundation, you confuse two things, the mathematical facts and the facts about mathematics. And then in, I thought oh, he really put the right words on the distinctions on ontology, formal, and logic, which would be the mathematical facts in the foundations of mathematics. And on the other hand, the facts about mathematics, so the epistemology, what kind of um, uh, knowledge is it? Uh, for the semantics, uh, is the unifying power or something? And so if I go for that conception, which is the one with which I ended for what is a foundation of mathematics, I would say that the metaphysics for the first part, for the mathematical facts, makes sense. But if I want to talk about the facts about mathematics, then I don't think I can talk about them in terms of metaphysics, but more in terms of groundings. But so, what grounds? Uh, 
uh, the fact that we have uh, um, that the mathematical knowledge is analytical. So that's um, probably uh, uh, in interesting to, to, to say that perhaps grounding is more flexible and allows to deal with the, the two aspects of the foundations. Okay. Yeah, because when, when we talk about fundamentality in, in metaphysics, we talk about entities most of the time. It's a metaphor for what is independent in being. Sometimes properties, you're right, but, and that's more ambiguous, but, but when, when you say set theory is the foundations of, of mathematics, and, and you describe that well, or, or category theory is the foundation of mathematics, are you saying that's the basic level or something like that? Or are you saying that's the thing that in virtue of everything is okay? Or that's the thing you have to accept and you build the rest. That, that, I, I was always confused, but maybe it's me and set theory. What is the basics of set theory? Is it the axiom or is it the sense? And for me, two completely different questions. My first reflex would be saying it's the axioms. So it's the ground. But if someone says, no, 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 I do not understand. It's the concept of set. And that looks like more not grounding. That looks like foundations in the in the in the being. So, and it's it's why I'm so confused when the project of category theory as a foundation is clearly not the same thing apparently than than set theory. From the axiom, yes, but from from the entities vision when they say that. The, 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 the morphism or the object, and you say, yeah, in a certain sense, yes, but in another sense, no. And you have the discussion you just had, yeah, but you can put everything in language of set theory, but that's not the point. The point is that what do you buy as the thing in virtue of everything will be okay? Or, I don't want to use the word two, but it's something like that. Um, but but it's my uh, you you work much more than me on these things so I, I'm very talking from outside. Um, the, the, concerning the um, set theory or category theory, um, the, 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 the issue you raised with the axioms is it the the, the set entity or the axioms? Um, I tried. To uh, in the presentation, not to put too much weight on set entity as the funding element, but more of, I think that's uh, that's not just my idea. But if 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 you read through literature, you can also interpret uh, foundations of mathematics in set theory in terms of the membership relationship. So that would not really so that would be the property which is axiomatized both in set theory and because uh, and also in category theory that's the composition uh, the requirements around the composition relation um, that is axiomatized and I think that it's it, if you interpret uh, the foundations of mathematics in set theory in terms of membership uh, Property, then it 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 opens the the subject and allows you to put the two of them on equal on equal foot. I think, um, but um, so that's one part of your question, and there was a second part of it. Um, you said that you were confused uh, with the fact that it's set, not the axiom. I would say that. That the, the, for me, that's more the membership property that is axiomatized. What can belong or not to a set so that we don't end up with paradoxes? But that, that, that's a chicken and the egg. <laughs> because, or you say, in an example, I, 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 
or we say we build the axioms of geometry to capture these things that it, that in a certain sense exist in Euclidean geometry, non-Euclidean geometry, or we say the axioms themselves generate a domains of things. And I don't know what is the right way to think, but I think from the people that are engaged in a foundation project, that makes a big difference. That there's stuff, and the axioms are just technique. So what is important is these properties that you want to map, to capture. Or it's a formal domain, and it's just language open and ontology. Sometimes, very surprisingly, you don't control well what happened. And it seems that it's a different project because when I learned about category theory and I, I read the many things you wrote about the history of category theory, these guys were not in the project to find the basic block of the thing. They were, they were looking for the universal language of mathematics, which is not the same thing as set theory because the I have a blank uh, the French mathematician, the, the name of a general of this group, Bourbaki. The Bourbaki project is like, well, you have that set theory and you rebuild everything. Mm -hmm. Even the notion of structure is not defined by a set. It's more complicated, it takes pages and pages. And it seems a different project. Um. Perhaps I, I will change my mind, but at this stage, I would say that it's more that you have stuff there and that you axiomatize it, because when you look at history, the notion of set was not properly given. It was uh, something that was uh, really um, built and developed and fine-tuned with the issues of Cantor and then Frege, and you also have ah, there are paradoxes with Russell, and then we will try to refine it like this, and then you had ZFC with so, and also there are there are all the mathematical facts, and they were not the, what was in the mathematics before and the, the, the concepts before the. With that formalization and the axiomatization of mathematics were not thrown away. They were incorporated in a way from the axioms. So I would rather go for the fact that there are um, stuffs and mathematics um, and it, at a given time there are different tools, there were issues and they solved the issues with the tools they had and they ended up with that axiomatization, that definition of a set, but if historically it had been different, if um, categories had been uh, there, perhaps that would be category theory that would have been that um, taken as uh, the foundations. <laughs> I don't want to take time for someone else, but yeah, you're absolutely right that the object comes first in the practice. Yeah, it's like group. We had the notion of a group much before axiomatization. And after that, once you have the axiomatization, you have new problems and new notion. Do we? Yeah, there was some part in Gadoa about the transformation of equations. So it's, it's not a full group at the beginning, and after that it becomes okay. a full notion of group, there was a notion of uh, solution transformation. Okay. That is very close, yeah. Yeah, at least it's under a group theory. But group, group, the actualization came that a long time after. I understand for set it took a long time because you know, it's FNC, it's ZFC is not that easy to find. That I, that I agree, okay, and so, and there's the notion of tool also. So we, we in mathematics, we built entities to do tools. So group theory now is a tool of mathematics to study geometry, to study all kind of stuff. It's also part of mathematics as object too. You're right. You're right. 
But why the foundation should be related to the beginning of a discipline? So we start from entity and we get to something else. And the foundation would be, okay, entity first, just because it's the way we do it. So for, I give you an example in metaphysics. You would say, linguistically and conceptually, we are much better for substance. Substance is close to language. You know, it's the way fix stuff, stuff fix change. <laughs> but it's always a thing that we capture. And linguistically, it's a lot like that. But a metaphysician says, no, but it's completely wrong. The real thing is process. That's the real thing. Why should it depend on the way you get to it? And so why, I know mathematics is not discovering something outside, so it's something we build. So maybe it's more dependent. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's something outside. So, so maybe mathematics is a special case. It's not, it's not <coughs> But why the, 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 the path we, we, we develop to, to, which is arbitrary, like you said, maybe if we develop, we had developed category there first, it would be different. But why did the, the question of foundation should depend on the history? I'm very confused about mathematics, <laughs> all these questions. But, um, it, does it really depend on the history? I don't know, but I think that there was really a turning point uh, in mathematics when the need for foundation arose because um, for um, thousands of years before, people would not, I think, even need uh, for foundations. Um, and it was not, a, that's not a top-down approach then, uh, I will be, it's not like a, a house where you build the foundation, then you build the house there, you bring the foundation afterwards to, to save the building historically, that's what happened. Uh, so, um, I think from the historical point of view, that's um, for me. That's to to better understand why it was needed because it was not always needed. Um, now I I agree with you that um, is history must not guide everything in foundations because then if it's the case we would say okay that's just set theory because historically that set theory that was designed and chosen as a foundation so we should not even um, discuss about the status of category theory if it was really history that would um, be the, the criterion um, for, for, for choosing the, the theory of foundations so Mm -hmm. uh, fair enough. But, but, but yeah, I don't know. So if, you have if, the if house and you're you, looking for the base. After <laughs> because you, you yeah, said maybe the house will fall. So yeah, and, really it, and, and, and science with, will collapse with, with uh, the rest. So it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when you, you look at the, the text, people uh, were really. Uh, um, I mean, it's not in panic, but it was really important. The phenomenon was so really, but if there is that issue with mathematics, all the rest physics, we can throw everything away. And he, he started to, to 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 do some work into that because he, he thought, okay, there is really a very big issue there. Um, but I don't know if I really understood your point. What what history is to do with foundations? Why should should it has something to say, but yeah, because there was an historically an issue that we do not encounter anymore, but it's true that's not also something that is fixed and that prevents anything else to be a foundation. Okay. So, 
guess you would have already looked at it, and I don't know if you know, but reverse mathematics, which is exactly what you're saying, we have mathematics as well, and we try to get back to what is required to get to this mathematics. So if you have a layer, look at that. Uh, that is, uh, maybe you yeah. should look at it. But uh, my question would be on the Grandi, you are very right to say that it's a very big concept in computer physics. And most of the time, there is an underlying idea of explanation. And explanation in mathematics is a very polemical subject. <laughs> so I would, uh, I would like to ask you what is your position on the explanation in mathematics? Do you take it as different from proof? I guess in the future, if you go back east, it's a different thing that if you're a modern mathematician, I guess. And uh, if it uh, plays in the super game, what is the definition of explanation mathematics? Um, well, that's. Uh, <laughs> that, um, yeah. uh, what I would take as a definition of explanation in mathematics. Um, um, here in the um, in the talk, um, I've shown that there are two interpretations of grounding: one in terms of explanation, and one in terms of uh, determination. And uh, for I buy, I buy into more the um, explanation. Uh, the grounding as a more more as explanation than uh, determination. Um, but what is explanation? In, so so in this sense, um, the the facts um, that would ground uh, mathematics would um, have should have some uh, explanatory power. Uh, for explaining some uh, some features of mathematics, and um, perhaps um, one example for that is when when I said that uh, uh, I would I interpret category theory as a grounding uh, also a possible grounding theory for mathematics and. Um, for example, because it's a law to give an interpretation uh, for universal property, um, but that's that's really the, the role of category theory, which would um, allow to, to show that the, some mathematical construction are equivalent up to isomorphism. That uh, equivalence to up to isomorphism is really something that is. Uh, given in, in, in category theory. So from that point of view, it, it contributed to understand um, something that we can buy uh, some objects which, which have, they have properties, but we can uh, build them different ways. They will be equivalent. That's explained in some sense by uh, category Theory, so I would. Yeah, well, from what I remember about the debate, I was going to get some Mark Steiner's list of what I can actually explain, right? And the debate is uh, it seems that most of the virtues you have are non epistemic in the sense that they are more subjective, or it's hard to have a real definition of what is an epistemic value in mathematics, right? So, for example, for a communication, I can see uh, quite a good definition, non -to, non to subjective definition, but apart from that, it seems very hard to have. Uh, Notion of explanation in mathematics that is non non communicable, uh, non uh, social intermine or in the in the concerned community. I would expect that from that uh, explanation, what what uh, this take to be a good explanation to be very different from what uh, other type of mathematician to, to be a good explanation. So if you want to have a fundamental uh, foundation of mathematics that is based on the bonding uh, relations, then I guess you would have to. Say something about the communities of mathematics, no? Um, you mean in the sense that um, the, the explanation concept is dependent? It's in the art to 
qui ont une universal definition of what is the yeah. same value for the explanation, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's also true that um, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a concept which is very, and that's quite complicated and not clear what, what's, what explanation is in mathematics. We could also, um, explanation it's really complica complicated, but you, you go just uh, the, the for formulation uh, in mathematics that you choose to formulate things in set theory or in category theory. Um, will it depend from one mathematician to, to another? That's, um, that's almost a sociological question. Yes. So. <laughs> but then, yeah. Um, If, if, yeah, with this consideration, it's, it's uh, just sort of sociological aspects of uh, mathematical knowledge. That's something that is also, I think, much complicated, perhaps at the boundary of uh, the questions on foundations. But I, I would say that um, I would keep this really at the boundary because just with what we have, it's already com com complex um, and there is also that meta-theoretic aspect, and so if you inflate it up to having different notions of explanation, and so you would have different expectations on the grounding, depending if you have a grounding which is explanatory in the sense of machin, of, and then that's true that you, yeah. you widen so much that... Um, yeah. And then it goes back to what Exxon was saying, like you have contingency in the foundation, and I think that's because if you are forced for a tradition that is historically uh, driven. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, up to a given point, yeah. yes, you have a contingency. Now it's not, I would not say that it's subject related and there is a, a gradation, but, but at some stage, yes. Uh, so, sorry to give myself a uh, chair uh, the words, uh, but uh, I'd like to uh, bounce back on this discussion. Um, and, and I was thinking about the, 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 the thing um, Alexander said about the process metaphysics. Um, like, maybe we should see uh, explanation and foundation in mathematics uh, uh, indeed as quite uh, questions that go beyond uh, the history, the, the sociology, the practice. Um, not the practice of a mathematician with a coherent point of view. The, their internal practice, so to say, is important and how they deal with new incoming uh, data, how they uh, revise their beliefs, that, that, is, that are issues that are very important in practice. But how uh, um, uh, the fact, for example, that people see different things as explanatory shouldn't necessarily be a problem. I mean, if there is something like an explanation in mathematics, um, it could very well have different forms uh, in different mathematicians because there is no general um, like philosophy of mathematics. Uh, there's mathematics, there's, there's formalists, and they all do kind of the same things, but they uh, uh, they, they make this, they do it in a different way, uh, they, they have different ideas uh, behind it. Um, so maybe we should look at the formal properties of what an explanation is in mathematics rather than, uh, than, than, than the fact that every mathematician should agree on what explains what or whether a specific proof is explanatory. Rather like if you consider this explanatory then you should also consider that explanatory and, and, and like making explanation, explanatory relations into a topic like logic is one um, that of which we can, that we, that we can characterize, but we cannot define uh, like you made a, 
you, you made that uh, point about kind of mentality and primitiveness. Maybe we could have a point of view like that in mathematics. I wonder what you yeah. think about that. Um, and this also made me think about the notion of grounding. You have the intuition that this is maybe better suited than uh, notions uh, of, of compositional phenomena mentality or something like that because there is an ontological feel to it. The problem is that grounding in the literature as it stands now is viewed as effective notion in a realist metaphysics, as you said, because Kit Fine is so much more intelligent than everybody else and he has this metaphysics, so people just copy this. Uh, um, and of course, that's perfectly fine to be to have that point of view, but maybe for mathematics, we would be interested would be more useful to have a notion of non-factive grounding. So where propositions ground other propositions, mathematical propositions ground other mathematical propositions, in the sense that uh, there is some relation between these propositions that makes the, 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 the relation between them one of order, one of this, if this were true, uh, another fact, another thing would be true in virtue of that thing. Whether it's true or not is maybe not even the issue, um, which goes well. That's another point in the discussion with reverse mathematics, where you cannot say like, well, all these things are true or something like that. But we we see that that this is like seems needed for a lot of other things. Uh, so it seems more fundamental and more explanatory, whether it's true or not. Um, there are different uh, more advanced theories of, of set theory that are stronger than, than set theory. You can add actions. Do we add these actions because they are true? No, probably not, because uh, um, <coughs> continuum hypothesis is true or not. People don't know, but they say, well, we can do that. And then we can get to other things that are that seem less fundamental. Um, and the, re the, the relation that we have there is not one of logical consequence, because that will completely uh, uh, not work. I mean, that's, that's, that doesn't have that uh, fundamentality level. Everything is flattened in mere uh, <coughs> logic. But if we take explanatory, the, the grounding relation as something that is um, non-effective and, and, and which we cannot, we don't need to define, we just need to have to, to see what its formal properties are, maybe we can get to a notion that would satisfy all of these doubts that we seem to have, or desires, or something like that. Um, and so I'm wondering, and this doesn't need to, we don't have to agree that that, that set theory is then grounds in geometry or something that may be specific to, but, but, but um, some results seem to be much more like uh, complicated and uh, based on a lot of more simple mathematics uh, taken together from different theories and such things seem to be uh, uh, i mean there seems to be something that we li would like to capture even if we may disagree on 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 which part of mathematics is more fundamental just the fact that fundamentality and explanation and explanatory inference is something that gets to some no, some some intuitions in the practice uh, uh, maybe enough maybe shouldn't like try to have this definition of open explanatory proof because the literature shows that this is like a pretty I mean, we haven't gotten anywhere yet uh, after a lot of time uh, studying this kind of notion so these are some ideas uh, that I hope for uh, for discussion maybe yeah uh, and of course uh, you your opinion about this is but, but, uh, that's true that uh, because yes um I would say, yeah, that's um, true that grounding is flexible for um, analyzing the, fun, fun, the, the internal part, so the, the mathematical effects, but also uh, the facts about mathematics for the foundation. And also, I, I said uh, just uh, before the beginning of the talk to Alexandria, yeah, and there is also, I would also like to apply this to uh, examine the status of the multiverse. Uh, in uh, mathematics, and um, as you say, if I take the grounding, um, so uh, which it, it's a grounding relation which is purely factual, 
um, and the, the, for the, the status of the, the multiverse, that's... Uh, because it's between factual and effective. So effective is implying truth. Yeah. Factual is like what I mean, is exactly, yeah. about the facts. Oh, okay. Um, it's just a small yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 supervisor. Yeah, sorry. okay. So, um, but if, if I, if you, if, if we have the, the, the multiverse uh, in which um, that we consider as a tool for representing some assertions that may be possibly true, but uh, which we don't know, um, that's true that with that concept, the conception of grounding, as you said, more um, um, different from from the why, from the one of why, that would make it um, an extended tool, a better tool for analyzing this. So that's. That's a, that's a nice interpretation of, of grounding that could be very useful also for these for these status. It's also, is the multiverse something that is um, fundamental in mathematics or not? Uh, so that, that's um, yeah, that is very interesting to consider that notion of uh, let's say it's an extended notion, but a different notion of grounding. And you say yeah. yeah. As somebody else. I don't know if you want to what you were saying, but uh, I didn't think of it in this sense. So you go back to the law for notion? Yeah, so a primitive notion. So just there is a relation between two sentences, uh, propositions, but I mean, uh, a relation is never really between sentences. Uh, we are not interested in linguistic stuff, but what they represent. So they represent propositions. Um, and then just like A explains B, this is, or we could call it grounding to make it less epistemological, because that's not what we want to get at. Uh, it's not what explains it for us, but it's, it's what, uh, what is more basic than another thing. Um, and call that grounding and then define actions or rules for um, for this relation and see uh, 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 if you accept certain uh, things as more fundamental than others like what like it's probably transitive that's something that everybody in grounding so almost everybody agrees on but, but it, it can also relate with other pieces of, of, of language like modality um, if you have a grounding relation, if A grounds B, you probably want that it's necessary that if A then B, uh, so it implies a modality. So you have relations with many things of language, maybe with causal sentences and so on, that's maybe less interesting in, in mathematics, but, um, and, and it's rather maybe, uh, it's, it's maybe a good idea to, to look at the, the formal properties and the way we use grounding rather than to understand what it would be or whether it uh, says something about facts and, and, and whether things really exist or something like that, to, to, to take it away from realist metaphysics uh, to try to do some more uh, structuralist metaphysics, uh, if, if, if I would. It's not a term, but, but I guess you get the, the idea. Uh, it would be good. I'm going to go some point, some part of mathematics where the, the computer doesn't follow logically from the premises of the Some part of mathematics where you have proof that you can uh, logically uh, you can construct uh, easily, or uh, when you have a use mathematical, if infinite uh, uh, numerical calculus, and stuff like that, to prove the conjecture. That, uh, Stega is a proof, even if logic speaking, you can't check that the proof works. Uh, I haven't thought about these cases. Because you have these kind of niche cases where mathematics can't be used to logic that is easy, right? Yeah, well, we yeah, have like Gödel's theorem or something like that. The middle sentence would not be yeah. provable while true. I'm always very skeptical about such claims. Okay. Uh, I think they cannot well, why, be why substantiated. Would they be a because it's contractive, so we don't care. 
Yeah, but then you could internalize that as just being a visualization between the proof and its consequence. But there is no proof. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm looking at something that is even stronger than logical inference, yeah, right? That, that the kind of proofs that are explanatory. Yeah. Uh, so it's a subclass. Of course, if there's things that explain in mathematics beyond proof, I'm not sure that that is actually not often just an, uh, yeah. a sort of heuristic and not really very reliable. Um, it might be a useful image to have, but not not something that is deeply mathematical. That's discussed. But that's not what I wanted. Like it's it's it, it's even more specific than deduction. Okay. They do that everywhere, but now let's see. Like what what is more basic, uh, and when do we? Really, do a proof uh, that is showing the, the the less evidence from the more evidence. Or, it's not about evidence, but but you get the picture. It's, it's about levels uh, of of basicness of reality. Or you want to go down um, to but, uh, mathematical, mathematical reality or mathematical, or mathematical, mathematical <laughs> constructions or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not exactly following the, the the trouble with grounding. It's giving such a Overuse concept, so it's difficult to follow what's at stake. But I I know that in metaphysics, people are moving away from grounding for various reasons, and for example, using different, let's call it, building relations to make sense of fundamental, uh, fundamentality and levels, and they're using relations such as ontological priority or other things. Constitution. Constitution, whatever, something like, you know, to get some kind of creation story. And what, what did God have to build? In order to make this world, basically that's that's the idea. So you're trying to make sense of that. In in in, in relational terms, they're very very similar to grounding. I mean, sometimes they're really identical. It's purely mathematical properties, but, uh, but 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 don't don't go into all the problems of grounding. So also priority, I think, it could be it could be interesting to look at that. Like that yeah, but the, the project of Peter is to go outside that kind of question. Okay, <laughs> Jacob grounding. <laughs> Metaphysical grounding, but maybe not. It's to, 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 to a relation between proposition. <laughs> there could be stuff behind if you want, but you can't stop there. You know, this proposition in virtue of this proposition. Yeah, I like that because that's the way I understand the word grounding. But I'm the only one because. Get fine, start the thing, and it's, it's really effective. <laughs> well, actually, Brentano uh, started it a long time ago in the uh, 19th century. Oh, okay, I didn't and know. there it was not a, a, a effective notion. No, but, uh, interesting. So there's more conceptual notion. Uh, uh, concepts are not yeah. facts. I mean, they are not. I mean, you can. So, so there is not obviously effective. Uh, um, Nowadays, we see explanation perspective, grounding perspective, and, and uh, there's a big focus on truth, and but it's real. I think at, at some point, uh, grounded uh, in, in in this paper on grounding, uh, Git Fine makes a distinction between uh, like uh, realist metaphysics and naive metaphysics, or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> And grounding is for realism, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then it gives it submissions, so it's like the word, of course. <laughs> <laughs> to be naive, to not care what really exists, is there something like that. Uh, yeah. <coughs> what was the other discussion you made in this paper? Was something was reading for you or reading for you? I don't know. Somebody else wants to. We still have 12 minutes. If there's still some points. No, everybody's satisfied. You want to add something? Um, no, thank, thank you for the questions, for the interaction. I think that uh, it helps me to also to clarify uh, to clarify something to. To see exactly uh, if the conception I have is uh, something that is um, 
that can be defended. So, so it was it was very very great to have your feedback uh, on this uh, on this proposition for the interpretation. So, th thank you to to all of you for uh, for listening for uh, uh, contributing. So. Thank you. Thank you.